Hello everyone and welcome back to One Track Jazz. Today, we're diving into the extraordinary life of a true music legend, the one and only Ella Fitzgerald. From her humble beginnings to her meteoric rise to fame, this is a story that will inspire and amaze you. Ella Jane Fitzgerald was born in Newport News, Virginia on April 25, 1917. Her father, William, and mother, Temperance, Tempe, parted ways shortly after her birth. Together, Tempe and Ella went to Yonkers, New York, where they eventually moved in with Tempe's longtime boyfriend, Joseph De Silva. To support the family, Joe dug ditches and was a part-time chauffeur, while Tempe worked at a laundromat and did some catering. Perhaps naive to the circumstances, Ella worked as a runner for local gamblers, picking up their bets and dropping off money. In 1932, Tempe died. Shortly afterward, Joe suffered a heart attack and died as well. Unable to adjust to the new circumstances, Ella became increasingly unhappy and entered into a difficult period of her life. Her grades dropped, and she frequently skipped school. After getting into trouble with the police, she was taken into custody and sent to a reform school. Living there was even more unbearable, as she suffered beating at the hands of her caretakers. Eventually, Ella escaped from the reformatory. The 15-year-old found herself broke and alone during the Great Depression. Never one to complain, Ella later reflected on her most difficult years with an appreciation for how they helped her to mature. In 1934, Ella's name was pulled in a weekly drawing at the Apollo, and she won the opportunity to compete in amateur night. Once on stage, faced with boos and murmurs of what she gonna to do, from the rowdy crowd, a scared and disheveled Ella made the last-minute decision to sing instead of dance. Ella quickly quieted the audience, and by the song's end, they were demanding an encore. In the band that night was saxophonist Benny Carter. Impressed with her natural talent, he began introducing Ella to people who could help launch her career. Ella began entering and winning every talent show she could find. Sick Webb offered Ella the opportunity to test with his band when they played a dance at Yale University. Despite the tough crowd, Ella was a major success, and Chick hired her to travel with the band for $12 a week. In 1936, Ella made her first recording. Love and Kisses was released under the DECA label, with moderate success. During this time, the era of big swing bands was shifting, and the focus was turning more toward bebop. She began experimenting with scat singing, and her improvisation and vocalization thrilled fans. Throughout her career, Ella would master scat singing, turning it into a form of art. In 1938, at the age of 21, Ella recorded a playful version of the nursery rhyme, Tisket, Ah, Ask It. The album sold one million copies, hit number one, and stayed on the pop charts for 17 weeks. Suddenly, Ella Fitzgerald was famous. While on tour with Dizzy Gillespie's band in 1946, Ella fell in love with bassist Ray Brown. The two were married, and together they adopted a child born to Fitzgerald's half-sister, Frances, whom they christened Ray Brown Jr. Ray Sr. was working for producer and manager Norman Granz. Norman saw that Ella had what it took to be an international star, and he convinced Ella to sign with him. From 1956 to 1964, under Norman's management, Ella worked with Louis Armstrong on several albums and recorded covers of other musicians' albums, including those by Cole Porter, Duke Ellington, The Gershwins, Johnny Mercer, Irving Berlin, and Rogers and Hart. Fitzgerald made her first tour of Australia in July 1954 for an Australian-based American promoter. Although the tour was a big hit with audiences and set a new box office record for Australia, it was marred by an incident of racial discrimination that caused Fitzgerald to miss the first two concerts in Sydney. Although the four members of Fitzgerald's entourage all had first-class tickets on their scheduled Pan American Airlines flight from Honolulu to Australia, they were ordered to leave the aircraft after they had already boarded and were refused permission to reboard. Although a contemporary Australian press report quoted an Australian Pan Am spokesperson who denied that the incident was racially based, Fitzgerald filed a civil suit for racial discrimination against Pan Am in December 1954, and in a 1970 television interview, Fitzgerald confirmed that they had won. 
The suit and received what she described as a nice settlement. Ella also began appearing on television variety shows. She quickly became a favorite and frequent guest on numerous programs, including The Bing Crosby Show and The Nat King Cole Show. Ella spent a legendary two weeks performing in New York with Frank Sinatra and Count Basie. Fitzgerald's appearance with Sinatra and Count Basie in June 1974 was for a series of concerts at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. The shows were a great success, and in September 1975, they grossed $1 million in two weeks. Outside of the arts, Ella had a deep concern for child welfare. Though this aspect of her life was rarely publicized, she frequently made generous donations to organizations for disadvantaged youths. In September of 1986, Ella underwent quintuple coronary bypass surgery. The press carried rumors that she would never be able to sing again, but Ella proved them wrong. In March 1990, she appeared at the Royal Albert Hall in London, England, with the Count Basie Orchestra for the launch of Jazz FM, plus a gala dinner at the Grosvenor House Hotel, at which she performed. In 1987, President Ronald Reagan awarded Ella the National Medal of Arts. By the 1990s, Ella had recorded over 200 albums. In 1991, she gave her final concert at New York's renowned Carnegie Hall. It was the 26th time she performed there. She died from a stroke on June 15, 1996, at the age of 79 in her Beverly Hills home. Hours later, signs of remembrance began to appear all over the world. A wreath of white flowers stood next to her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and a marquee outside the Hollywood Bowl Theater read, Ella, we will miss you.